enlightenment state of flight from the line. Plotinus' line is. Plotinus is legit. Well, they did They did quote Plotinus. But they took one of his more profound lines. So they. Europe has got war. Intellectual war. Right from day one. I did this with it. But this book goes into how, so it's the, the book that I'm reading is called Boomeritis, and so they're saying that we've been stuck in this flatland type realm of consciousness because of the baby boomer generation. Uh, but they're, they're espousing uh, that we need to emerge out of relativism, out of materialism. And so there's, I think they're sensitive to the fallacy or the insufficiency. How about ventricle philosophy? Yeah, integral psychology. Integral psychology. It's the same. The no, where they from? Where? Sorry. Sri Aurobindo. Oh, that makes sense. I think they explained Sri Aurobindo. Sri Aurobindo <laughs> is their body. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sri Aurobindo and Gandhi, they have the same mark. Neither of them were Hindu. Our Aurobindo's father kept him from all fellow Hindu. And at the age of five, wrapped him up and sent him to England. He was educated only in English schools. Then he moved to Paris and studied one kingdom. Henry Bergson, Vital, right, Ivan Vital, the principal of Ivan Vital. In India, there was a revolt against the British. So he zoomed to India. Educated, brought up. So what did he do? They jailed him for being part of the opposition. And jailed him for not this part of the Hindus. And then they allowed him to do his own homework or studying, and he got involved in it. And blocked him. Gandhi was never in India. Never in India. He, he was from Africa. South Africa. So when the revolt started, he too ran to India. He said, I don't know anything about India. So he took train rides all over the place so he could learn. He said, look at what India was. He never in India. Both of them. So was Sri Aurobindo's original mentor or thinker that you influenced him? What was it? What were his thinker that you said influenced Sri Aurobindo initially? Did then Sri Aurobindo elected Harid Ashtar, his philosopher, exempting the United States to espouse the theories of Sri Aurobindo. And it's supposed to be the 41 of the central words. Is integral and integral. That is there. Yeah. Uh, uh, that is where they're going. Yeah. I knew the group well. I've never seen it. I found it on the website. Like a lot of the languages. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Thank you. And I did a study. I'm not having enough children. Um, hmm. Harris. Obadiah Harris. She was in the University of South Africa. But she was kind of involved. So I think that's a great thing for her. I said, it's not a thing, but we were studying her. She was a little bit. She was never a little bit. We got to learn a whole sample. She never studied with a little bit. Wouldn't there have to be some, like, 
spirit, though, that aroused, that allowed him to stay in it and to nurture it and to make that it his own? Two volume work called Shabbatsko, which is probably the most sophisticated English I have ever read anywhere. Well, the guys are both not I mean, he, he will never use a small, simple word to express anything he ever saw. And he put it in poetry. And you're like, oh, God. Is it, is it, is it? Is it's available. But, it, no, but is it like, if I have a copy, I can tell it to you. But it isn't, like, below. I'll, I'll sign it here from our <laughs> But, but with, your, with where you see, able to see through, is he into the logos? Is, no, uh, I mean, that depends on the logos. The highest. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh. There he is. There is. Remember Mike Scott? Remember Mike Scott made that whole golden chain? Yeah. He tries to get into the key thing. Is he tries to get into the unbiblical dance. Yeah. That's the competing. And like that to be careful. What, how do you follow the other? Who is the best coach? Who is the best coach? Who is the best coach? And there is a real living tradition of this stuff. And primarily, it's Siddhartha and Shankaracharya. And Radha Krishna is one of the experiments of it. put together a four volume work in the Apanishad as a running commentary on all of mm. these two things. So, if you can go there and pull out an energy, then that's some of the foundation for our guys of the body. And that has its roots in Greek philosophy. That has its roots in? In Greek philosophy. Yeah. In Greek philosophy. Can't we say that? Oh, Textual no, influence? Yeah, that of course. Yeah, it's actually the other side of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So years ago, I went to an artist on um, Hindu art. And every room, every different room, had a different age and location in India, each of the states. That's all you need to go into one, go into the other, and, and you can say, oh, there's a change here, that's good. Oh, where did it come from? Oh, from there. Oh, you can trace it back to taxi. And alongside of it is Greek thought. Mm -hmm. That's the part that I was trying to discover behind, mm -hmm. behind this chain. Let's take a look at what we have. David? I got none. That's good. Uh, yeah, if people Words? would like to come to my no. house. I don't. That, I didn't write that. But I do have a. Well, I have a dream, but I didn't write it out, and I might not want to do it. Well, if you want it, put it up. Yeah. Or just find insight as needed.
Well, we were playing with the first question with Julie. Mm -hmm. Do you want to go any further? Depends on you tomorrow. Yeah. Mailing it. <laughs> then you'll know whether or not you have a problem or not. So you have to put a bill in. The whole thing tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, I could. So, uh, we need a reader. We sure do. Please read it. What is the role of the self in regards to nirvana is samsara, samsara is nirvana? Or how can the Buddhist say nirvana is samsara, samsara is nirvana without the self? Hmm. Hmm. The Upanishads, uh, there are 103 of them, and in several, the idea of the self is central. But they never explore it in terms of what are the implications of it if there is such a thing as the self, nor do they make divisions such as you find in the Parmenides. In any case, they made a distinction of the self as Atman and the Jiva. Now, the Jiva is the, what you might call today the personality. The higher view of the self is the Atman. They build a philosophy on Atman as the self. Now, in order to go from Shiva to Atman is the issue of the different yogas. The uh, most interesting thinkers in this game is Shankaracharya. And Gaudapada. They're the principal thinkers that started <coughs> the highest aspect of Hindu philosophy. Now, the Buddhists came along, and Buddha is the name, is a title, that's not his name. Buddha means mind. So, uh, so Buddha as mind, started with the premise that, hey, you know what? This is mistaken. There isn't any Atman. So they have a non-Atman philosophy. And what that means is in, in the highest, in the more profound states of Samadhi, 
there is no evidence of assault. Therefore, they announce the key to, key to seeing into the nature of reality is you have to give up the idea of the Atman. Now look, uh, see, now they have a problem. In the higher, and they now therefore in mind, you have various states of mind. <clears throat> and in northern uh, northern India, see Buddhism started growing in India, and then there was a counter movement against them, and they went north. And the monk, therefore, you can call the northern Buddhists what has been called Mahayana Buddhism, which means great Maha, great. Yana, study of right? Mahayana Buddhism, study of the greater Buddhism. Therefore, only Buddhists call themselves, but no Hindu would want to call them a Mahayana. Therefore, they prefer to call themselves Northern Buddhists and Southern Buddhists or Theravada. So what? Uh, in the various states of mind, you're talking about nirvana. No self. But if, and therefore it is, see, it is empty of self. It is, it is not true that they are positing emptiness it's emptiness of the self. Well, okay. Then, what's the rest of this, samsara? Then, what's the relationship between the everyday world <coughs> and nirvana? <coughs> so, the question is, Is the first state a clear openness without any mark of the self? Is that the highest? Well then, <clears throat> The other extreme is sansara. Well, then they have a dualism, <clears throat> a severe dualism. Therefore, they want to now go the next step and say, while this can be said to the most profound state, it's not, because you are making a distinction. So you're making a distinction without any mark of the self. Oh, then it's not really clear and open. Well, wait a minute. Maybe samsara looked at from the view of the highest state. If if this is making a distinction and it's really clear and open, <clears throat> then this is an addition, this is a distinction. So what would it be to be clear and open without any distinction? Well, these are one. That's higher. Now, <clears throat> of course, they have the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path. 
But uh, they got a problem. Uh, they ask these questions, see? Samsara is suffering. What? Um, what is suffering? <clears throat> now, it's, some people put in the word, what is pain? But that's not the true. It's dukkha in Sanskrit. It really means suffering. What is it? What's the origin of it? And what they're saying, the origin of suffering it comes down to just one thing. Within man, doesn't matter what kind of object you're talking about, your attachment to any object is the source of suffering. since it is always in flux and changing. So what's their solution? <clears throat> stop, stop, stop that grasping. Pull away from it all. So that's a withdrawal from the object. Now what they really have is they do not have the origin of suffering. This is the condition for suffering, not the cause of it. <clears throat> See? To light the candle, I need a cause to ignite it. But there has to be conditions that allow that. There has to be a certain temperature. There has to be a certain level of oxygen. There has to be a, a material that is flammable. These are the conditions, not the cause. So what they have is not the cause or the origin of suffering, but the condition for it. The, uh, what suffering is, is the consequence of having a false belief about the nature of reality in yourself. That's a cause. That's a cause, not the condition, that's a cause. Now, <clears throat> you see, now you can't use the word self in this game in a pure sense. You can't use the idea of self because they have and emptiness, they have no self. Uh, see, uh, How can the Buddhists say nirvana and samsara is nirvana 
without the idea or without the self. No, it's the other way around. The Buddhists say nirvana and samsara are one, and that is a higher nirvana, and it ain't got the soul. By definition, it has no soul. Um, Now, this is uh, <clears throat> this is kind of pure Buddhism, but then there is the Mahayana, Northern School, and. They explore the idea of, of a enduring self that goes through life and death and life and death interminably, right? Um, and that is the great uh, easiest way to get that is the Tibetan Book of the Dead. So therefore, the idea of the self comes back in Mahayana. And for those interested in it, also the Lankavatatra Sutra moves into this direction. Because there's an urgency in, among a certain class of people not to be satisfied with this simple statement. And therefore, there's then a, a tendency to try to play the game of understanding. That changes everything. Um, now, um, third, and any time you want to say anything, so. Um, <clears throat> what was that last thing you said about uh, going yeah. into understanding? Pardon me? What was the last thing you said about if you try to go into understanding? That's Mahayana Buddhism, especially Lankavatatra Sutra, oh. uh, to some degree Nirvana Sutra. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Heart Sutra to some degree. So they're trying to break out of what, what is called primitive Buddhism. Now, um, Um, do you want to read this one, Barbara? Ah, well, okay. Which vision, experience, state is the goal of man? Self, oneself, or the one? Can any of them be shown to be higher or ultimate? Which one and how? Let me talk for a minute about this problem. <clears throat> Parmenides has his own hypothesis. There's no gap. It's one self. Now, 
It takes some skill in reading because Parmenides has a way of reasoning which you have to grasp, which is he's going to have to develop an argument. about the nature of the one. After he does that, he then concludes from this about the self. He'll do this repeatedly. This is his model. And there's a kind of interesting little Greek word in here that he announces apara as his conclusion for the next level of thought. So that repeats itself all the way through the first hypothesis. Now, there are only several possibilities. Let us assume we have this repeating itself again and again and again. Now, you should be able to go back and look at you should be able to collect all the statements about the self and all the statements about the one and ask, are they the same? Are they equivalent? Those are different. Are they the same? Is he saying the same thing about the one as he is about the self? If so, then there's no difference. And if there's no difference, why does he fool around and call it one self? You could either call it one or call it self. You don't need both words if they're the same thing. So now that means you have to go back and cultivate all the references to the self and collect them and ask yourself, is it conceivable that that he's making a very clear statement somewhere in the text. <clears throat> that the one is not the soul. Possible. Uh oh then there must be a difference. But wait a minute. If that's true, then you have to now look here for a significant difference. Well, let's assume for the moment it's there. Okay? It's there. Now, see, this question is raising the issue.
Now we have the issue. Let us assume there is a difference. So what? I have two choices. Does that difference mean you're dealing with something better by, the, by virtue of that difference? Could it then be higher and more profound because of that difference? Or does it indicate the difference therefore is less than and does not achieve the same status as the one? Right? That's the issue, right? Yeah. Now, <clears throat> what can you say about this strange guy who wants to say that his own hypothesis is this? Could be both higher or lower. Could be the same. In other words, we could write it this way. Right, said one self, one same thing. So now, how would you decide which of the three ways is proper? So come on, we speculate. Come on. Well, among the differences. Right, you found you would have to see uh, if they're hierarchically arranged or not, and if they are, then you're going to uh, label them accordingly. More, go ahead, keep going. Therefore, go ahead. Run. <laughs> Come on, give him the elbow. Do you want to help him? Yeah. You, you ended by saying that Parmenides' hypothesis is one self. Right. And through the first hypothesis, he is making subtle distinctions between one and self. Right, ho. Notice the way he reasons, you see. He reasons in this fashion. Again and again and again. He's going to argue about the nature of the one. Then he concludes from that conclusion about the self. He never argues for an argument to justify the existence of the self by itself independent of the one. Would that be, is that sufficient to say, right, uh, higher than the other then? Well, it, because, right, he... Look here, forget this. Well, well, what is man? Well, man is, is uh, both masculine and feminine. And uh, uh, therefore, 
Uh, by the way, would you not agree that of the two, the, the male is more significant? <laughs> well, Obviously. I would go with that they could be other without being different. Yeah, see? Mm. See, there is a difference. There is a difference. They're other. Does that difference mean one is higher than the other? No. Ah. That's not in my world. Can we use that reasoning over here? Or does it, it doesn't fit? Would you not have to describe both? See, suppose you were to reason in the way Parmenides is doing. Okay, you can have the following arguments about what it is to be masculine. At the conclusion, he then talks about the feminine. But he never describes what the feminine is independent of the male. Now, wait a minute. Suppose he does make a distinction on the side of the feminine, which you cannot attribute to the masculine. Could that difference make any difference about the nature of man? So you might say, that's a foolish argument, but that's the kind of thing we're doing it over here. What is the what is the final nature of the highest vision of man? Right? Man has a lot of visions. What's the highest? Parmenides is saying this. See, he reasons if the if the one Right, if the one self right, is, and then, uh, then we can talk about the one of the many. Yeah, we can talk about that. But you have to go back and talk about what it means to be the self. So how do you decide? I don't know. In fact, I have a further problem, which is, if you consider that, if you use the Venn diagram model, characteristics about the one, characteristics about the self, characteristics they have in common, what do you do with that? Is the one self the entire set? Is the one self the set they have in common? It's similar to the question here. Are the characteristics about the feminine part of what it is, what man is? It's just I, um, because I guess, would they have to be by necessity since man is both masculine and feminine? I mean, contains both. So then feminine, disti what distinguishes the feminine as feminine have to be characteristics in the class of what is characteristic of man? Mm -hmm. Or, I baffled myself. <laughs> or, no, it's just, so, or in distinguishing that there's a subset of two, two parts of man, and they have something in common, that commonness alone is what is man, and the rest is insignificant. How about that? That's one way. Then do you say what is in common between the one itself is significant? And what, is, what, what distinguishes the self? is not significant? Or are you going to take David's path? Well, other and different. Yeah, no, okay. I'm just, I don't know, it's going to um, See, <clears throat> suppose go one more step. Uh,
what if the difference between them is in its being the same in some way, only in some way? Hmm. Then you have to look and see how that difference can be described and only in, and now he qualifies what he means by saying in some way, do not confuse that, he says. I am not asserting that it is the same. And the same way I'm not going to argue that it's different. So it's only in some way. So now our difference now is going to be, again, where is it? Let me ask this. Look here. What difference does it make? Right now, what difference does it make to argue that the self plays such a role? What difference does it make? I mean, people have been in this work for years and they ignore the role of the self. So what? Let's dump it. What difference does it make to you? By the way, do you have a soul? Yes. You do. Well, yeah. Now, how is it being viewed here? <laughs> Vivifies it, makes it personal. Uh, makes it uh, a, a question about the nature, role of ignorance and wisdom, about concerning our mm -hmm. view of reality, whether right. we have a true view of reality or one that's false. That's absolutely right. And it makes it personal. Yeah. And it suddenly, we're in it. Yeah. See, all other translations are going to say just the one. Forget the, forget the role of the self. It's only a grammatical distinction, right? You should just use the word same and forget about self. So look here, then it puts, it puts what we are, self, <laughs> way up on top, metaphysically. The dialogue about the self, that's what they say about the Parmenides. Yeah, it's a dialogue about the self. You see that underneath all the titles. Yeah, and that's, see? Because if he's developing his reasoning, showing its similarity and difference, similarity and difference, then he's making a place for each of those steps for you. through the whole thing. Then 
hey, wait a minute, that means he also has to show it in the second hypothesis. And the third hypothesis. So look, the implication of this. Two successive moments, like frames on a film, they're static. You never experience change because what's this? This is the gap. It's out of this comes the change and what has been changed returns to its source. That means there has to be something incredibly knowing, beyond knowing. It has to be the paradigm of all change. Throughout the whole universe, Through the cosmos, present, past, and future. But wait a minute. From this, from this paradigm comes what is what is absolutely most appropriate. That means if it's most appropriate, it is also most meaningful. There's one, there's just one word that covers that. Therefore, this has to be providential. or uh, pranoia, right? So therefore, this has to be providential. It has to be such a knowing that it is beyond all normal kinds of knowing. It's a paradigm for everything. Hold it. Is it conceivable that therefore this operates obviously throughout all time. And suppose its source, the source of this stuff, is the soul, one soul. See, if mankind can be described in this way, does it not put a certain burden on man to wake up? You're not a little, a little shit, the, the local stink, right? But something incredible worth. And you're living through beliefs, seeking knowing of yourself. So therefore, to know thyself, which is the Greek paradigm for knowing, right? So, to know thyself, is Apollonian, right? That was Apollo. 
That was the principal, principal kind of philosophical quest of the Greek Hellenic spirit. Good reason. And notice they use the honorific thy self. Elevating it. And that's when you put a sigma in front of auto to get thy self. So, Parmenides is leading us along this way, right? And this, in fact, now is the second hypothesis. And beyond that, of course, is the one self. Okay, uh, are you familiar with more than one computer language? Oh, uh, could you talk about why one is better than the other and under what circumstances? Oh, what is the more perfect computer language then? The most expressive. The, the most, most expressive. expressive. Wait, I have the least. You have to do the least amount of typing. And you have to do the least amount of typing. Typing, good. It's more into the mind itself. And what would that be? Ele I guess you could say. What, what? Elegance. Or, uh, what? What did you say? Elegance. Elegance. Yeah, but what would it be? Which, would they have a name? <laughs> yes. It's for the human. What? The computer language is for the human. It's what is it called? It's for it's for the human. It's anything. It's it's for the human being. Okay. Therefore, you would say there does exist a better program for computers and computer language, yeah. and that is? No, they, they keep coming up with new ones all the time. I, now, <clears throat> you can make the distinction, can you, that the difference makes a qualitative difference in your judgment. Yeah. And you said more elegant, <clears throat> right? Uh, obvious, more obvious, expressive. more expressive. Is that like the self? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, this is the fun of getting into this dialogue, right? And we are stuck. For us. Because even <laughs> if we find the difference, we might say, I like it because it's like the self. Therefore, your standard of judging is the self. The self. Then you're putting a high value on self. Oh, if we can follow that reasoning, the difference has to make a difference in terms of our ability to allow us to say one is higher than the other. Mm -hmm. 
So wait a minute. What if he finds something unique to the self that not, cannot be attributed to the one? From your reasoning, finish it. Getting close. Would you elbow him, talk louder? Well, um, what was that stuff about being better for him? Sport, yeah. Okay. You see, you're making a great judgment. You're saying the qualities of the self, whenever it appears in something, gives it a higher quality than something like it without those very qualities. Because of the nature of the self elevates its object above any other standard. Oh. That's what you're saying, right? That's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you tune in, Next week, at the same time, we'll share the difference. Because I have a good group of people that are going to work like Bear, to, really, to get it. Right? You know the group? Okay. Oh! What a question. <clears throat> right. Opening lines of the Iliad, right? Sing, goddess of the ruinous wrath that brought upon Achilles in numerous woes and sent down to Hades the souls of many warriors, all for the sake of Zeus, right? Who's the goddess? that they're singing to, right? Hey, the whole thing is a song to the goddess. It's easy in the Iliad, I mean in the Odyssey, it's Athena. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it significant? I always thought so. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is, how can you rec how can you how can you recover it? Mm -hmm. What work looks back on the Iliad and assigns levels of meaning to it? The Odyssey, right? With the Fakians, right? That's a great speech by the Fakian, right? The leader, right? And he lays it out. This the whole Trojan War only has one reason for its existence. That is so that man can be educated about the nature of his reality. Huh? The whole thing is a, it's for man to learn from it. But that's Zeus, not a goddess. So, um, I among those who think it's significant but I don't have an answer. But it would be worth going back and looking at it once more. Because it should be there. No. And now Brian is going to give us a talk at least about what this means. Come on. 
gets you already. No, no, it's not me. I, I'm known as Pierre the Forgetful. <laughs> Hold on. I don't have anything to draw. Oh, that, 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 that. Um, so I put the question mainly to Pierre, because he asked us a few questions on the board. It was about Ken Wilber. You were familiar with Ken Wilber? Yeah. Um, what do you think about him? Have you read Lumen Riots? No. You read him in other Yeah. For sure. Um, okay. um, I forgot. The first couple of Because I didn't read Lumen Riots. It's one of the easier ones to get into. It's written more like a novel. It's engaging. Oh. As I'm reading yeah. it, and also exploring the famous Parmenides, I'm seeing it parallels, and he's writing in a language that's very different, but I think we can maybe trace one to the other, and I think Ken would benefit greatly by getting into the Parmenides, and maybe even like an early student of the Parmenides might benefit by getting into what they're calling spiral dynamics, which is the different stages of spiritual and psychological development of mankind. And there's three primary tiers. Uh, supposedly, man goes through all of them, and essentially, we're not supposed to negate any. So, like, even when you're at the top tier, you're still engaging in some of the more primal aspects and psychological aspects of our existence. Um, so, I'm still new to his work. I was really wondering if Pierre had gone into it or had others bring it to him, because uh, I had a friend recently that brought it to me. He said, the language I'm using which was coming out of Parmenides, he's saying, I'm, I have a common vision. I'm not using anything based on Plato. I'm using everything. My understanding is based on Ken Wilber. Um, so there's a lot of details. of lots of books written about integrated psychology, this whole model of spiral dynamics. Um, and Ken's role in it is um, AI, or artificial intelligence. Came to it thinking that robots or, uh, would potentially reach these higher spiritual states before man because mm. he was thinking their intelligence has the capacity to evolve much quicker than man's. Um, but then when he was introduced to integrated psychology, he says that she saw that now there was a gap. And there was mm -hmm. a requirement for the programmers or whoever was behind the AI to recognize this fundamental psychological growth development phases impugn that in the program. Otherwise, that these robots would never reach these high states of mind. And does he think that's possible? I'm, I'm still actually in the reading through Boomeritis, and he's coming to those conclusions. This book was, I think, written a decade ago. And so the technology back then, the more than that you could throw it down. But I do think he thinks it's possible. The book's Boomeritis. Boomeritis? Yeah, because he's saying the baby boomer generation and his creative psychosis, the UW Boomeritis, and it's limiting our capacity to go into this third tier, which is a world centric, um, kind of like cosmic consciousness. So mm -hmm. That then you're able to function through that mm -hmm. in your everyday world, um, which then so goes far past progressive. Can well, that from us or something? Huh? Are they, do the millennials? Have the they do, well. and, they, and then they, that's the, they're saying that if the millennials, the generation X, generation Y, stay with the confines of boomeritis, then ecological collapse is inevitable, and the extinction of our species is inevitable. And so they're saying that it's up to more and more people to get into this model of spiral dynamics to hopefully roll mankind out of the catastrophe. And they don't, do they look at all it? Beliefs or understanding blocks. They're they, I and mean, I think their model is more of like breaking through. Charge. Yeah. There's a psychological model built within it, but they're right now, the book of writers in particular, it's throwing their belief structures in their face like viscerally and making them confront them like this presenter in front of these groups. 
And then with that idea that it might crack their, their sheet. But it's not a self reflective process. Mm -hmm. Other than just saying, wait a Question. Do you know whether, as they make it up the spiral through this, to the levels, do they ever, like you said, they still are united in some ways with the lower levels, but do they ever like fall back? Backslide, they didn't yeah. address backslide. They didn't address black because that's, they told me that that's possible with enlightenment experiences. Yeah, yeah they so they do bring up. The way the characters in the, this particular book, they make these figures, once they reach this third tier, world centric, how the consciousness stays. And all the presenters at the seminar, they present them as like highly evolved spiritual beings that don't drop in and out. But it's also through the lens of Ken Wilber, so Ken Wilber might have an embellished or heightened view. Could you judge his? At this age, he's like 20 something in the book. So I think he was really spiritually immature at the, at the stage he was at where he's writing. Yeah. I think he's definitely got a lot further than that. Can you give a description of what that third tier consists of? Um, I wish I could. There, the spiral is based on a color scheme. So I believe it starts with red and then goes all the way up to be like, I think the third tier is like purple and purple. Um, some of the languages they, I mean, I brought up one, one woman who had reached the third tier stage, new language that was um, the time it's like, Go ahead. Pleasure. And using Goodbye. Highly Goodbye. Language. Two great guys. Two great guys. Okay. And take care of it too, as you do. Uh, like united with the all, like for their psyche like and their outside world become one, and like they, they sky up and who they are is like merge and become the same. And the same. There's a lot of like physical things. There's a lot of what? Like physical metaphors, like using nature based, like mystical state. So, <clears throat> Well, let him off the hook. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, Notice. He big, he big Not one mark. And then, like I said, this is the first text. He said, this is the one to get you into the context. And then he's going to send the second book, my friend, uh, okay. that he said then really lays the philosophy down. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me great, give you a question. <clears throat> what is the role of what we call the master of dreams or the dream master? Would you agree it reveals an unsuspected level of our existence. A meaningful level. Caught in a few images drawn from our our present life 
and from our past. With astonishing brevity and insight, agree? Mm -hmm. Say, looks like the uh, <clears throat> dream master has an interest in the self. Yes. Oh, but only in Brooklyn. Even in the most distant galaxy, there may be intelligent beings. Sure. They're also going to be... Oh. Oh. Well, then there is something at the core of reality that has a... Hey, all of this together means it's providential. Since the gift is, opens up something for your personal benefit. No one else's. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Uh, how important is it? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> Then there must be, hey, wait a minute, there must be uh, some kind of intelligence guiding all of that providential effort and work. At the core of reality, independent of time and place throughout the universe. Huh. Is that what he's talking about? The one self? I'd like to think so. It is a one, and it's a self. Therefore, if this is true, that intelligence then has to be providence working itself through an intelligible realm, preeminently rational, and that must be the, the Logos. If so, then this is a model of the Logos, where he's revealing the nature of the soul. The first, the second, and the third, or the first? First, second, and third. The, the way you reason. Now, how important is it <clears throat> to play this game? Very, absolutely. That's a way of life. Yeah. Right, just try to uncover the intelligibility of your and life itself. Mm -hmm. That's the game. Mm -hmm. That's our game, noblest game. So let's take a look and see something, okay? I understand we skipped dreams tonight. My God, oh, we did. You got one? Let's go. Hey, that's awesome. What were you asking? 
Okay, take a minute out, take a look at it. I was like, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I just wanted to get the right accent. Whoa. I had to make it different from the normal wow. Well. Yeah, it's different. It's a real sincere wow. Yeah, yeah. It's like, <laughs> Okay, want to read it? Yeah. I'm, I'm in some kind of kiosk or corner shop. I was sitting there and trying to fix a cell phone. I had to put some little chip back inside of it. I was saying to this really cute, adorable little girl, see, you have to do this. She was getting closer to me to see what I was doing. 
and then you have to click this in and it works and then I said yes it works we're sitting next to each other on a couch and we're kind of cuddling and she's so adorable so cute then she says in a cheeky way is there something you want to say to me her face is glowing I love you is what I wanted to say to her in that moment but she's way Louder, too, um, but she's way too young and I can't get involved with her she's actually Talia's little sister who was who has walked by every now and then I leave that place and now I'm standing on a patio veranda and I'm looking out out at the other side of the street there are some teenagers or young adults then Talia is standing next to me and she mumbles something in their direction she's saying something bad about them because she doesn't like them I say what did you just say all I heard was dickheads she smiles uh, she's working in this corner shop so she moves around a lot taking care of things in and around the store now it looks like the outdoor area of a pub like a smokers area I move to a place and I sit down to look at my phone uh, a lady appears next to me then I'm in a room and I'm sitting down then Talia is sitting next to me and she starts playing some video game in the game there's a girl running around through a city I said to Talia is this basically GTA but with a woman she says yes we're sitting next to each other on this couch looking at the game in the game she takes a car and starts driving she keeps driving then she's approaching a giant bridge I want to say something I want to interact with Talia so I say that bridge is that San Francisco bridge I always see it it's used in video games a lot as I'm talking she's driving the car in the game as she's driving the red bridge bridge looks majestic and now she's on it as she's driving onto the sloping uphill part of the bridge we in our seats are also tilting back as if we're in the car in the game we're tilting with the car as it's going uphill she's going up the bridge as she's going up the bridge it starts looking more and more majestic and big now we're leaning way back and the big screen is up above us because it's that uphill the car is pointing up into the sky and we're looking up into the sky and it's like wow I'm saying wow look at that and the buildings appear just above the road there's one especially tall building and it looks like the city is way up in the sky I say whoa that is some city have you ever been up in that building she says yes she's kind of giggling now because she can tell how I'm feeling I'm feeling like I'm an, on a roller coaster it's really intense wow this is crazy she's giggling she just keeps driving up the bridge into the heavens it really feels like we're there I'm like oh my god and laughing now she's laughing and I'm trying to get off the couch that we're sitting on laughing I'm trying to climb off the side somehow I get off and Talia is cracking up laughing she gets up as well and walks past me and off into some room looking at me as she walks away laughing as she's leaving I notice some birds around the place there's an ibis uh, laying down in the bedroom and there are some other birds around it I try to pet the ibis but it doesn't like it it goes wah wah so I ignore it uh, so I sit down on a normal couch I want Talia to come back so we can share in the funny moment she comes back and she says I have a stomach ache I'm about, and I'm about to say yeah you do from playing that game yeah, what do you make of it? it's a really fun dream hmm? it's a really fun dream yeah what do you make of it? Um, <coughs> I don't know. There's, hmm? I don't know. There's. Well, well, no, come on, come on, come on, come um, on. <clears throat> this girl Talia, she's a girl that I really like. Uh, that I've liked for a long time, hmm. and um, yeah, we are having some fun.
Are there stages in this stream? Do they reflect states of mind? If so, As you look at this stream, <clears throat> does it admit of stages? Uh, do they reflect different states of mind? Is it progressive? Where is the crisis? If there is a crisis, does it then spiral down. Yeah. Well, I, I can see two breaks. I can see two breaks. Go ahead. Um, the first one is with the uh, young girl. Um, there's a real moment of intimacy and uh, that's when I, I pull the brake. Yeah. yeah, right, right, right. So there is a high, I pull away, right? Go ahead. Uh, and then later, <clears throat> the, the other one is with Talia when I'm uh, playing the video game. And at the, at the most intense, most profound part is when I get off the couch. Uh, would you read the line where you would say is the high point? Um, Highest point? It's about um, about nine lines down in the second last paragraph. Um, wow, this is crazy. Uh, it's really intense. Wow, this is crazy. And I'm laughing. And I'm laughing because it's, it's like I'm on a roller coaster. It's, it's like skydiving or so, something like that. It, it, um, How do you characterize where you are and what you are experiencing? Give me a line. Uh, I'm feeling like I'm on a roller coaster. What? I'm feeling like I'm on a roller coaster. Oh, uh, she no. just she just keeps driving up the bridge into the heavens. What's that? Into the heavens. Oh, what's <laughs> that like? Come on. Uh, it's amazing. Huh? Come it's, on. It's amazing. It's like there's no there's no limits. No limit. It's, Come on. It's just going up without any without any end in sight. I mean, there's there what's is. What's it like? It's, it's like flying. It's like, it's like flying and falling at the same time. It's like... But it's the dullest thing you've ever experienced. No. No? Why you tell me? It, it was really... It was really rich. And rich. Come on, more. Really... Um, highly uplifting. And um, 
It was like uh, everything falling away. And that was like what? It was like heaven. <laughs> Come on. It was like heaven. Um, it was what like, did it do to you? If you could paint it, if you could put it to music, if you could dance in it, what would it be like? Uh, it would be like a, the most beautiful um, orchestra symphony that I ever heard. Hey, what happened? Violins. Huh? Uh, I was saying violins and... Um, I got scared. I got scared. What happened? In the dream, it's there. I, I, I panicked. Yeah, right? Yeah. What was that like? Come on. Um, Come on, what's that like? It's like... I have to get out of here. It's like... Uh, yeah. Come on, more. Uh, like, there's nothing to hold on to. I have to get out of here because... There's nothing to hold on to. Mm. See that expression? That explains the first part. I shouldn't hold on to her. Too young, right? There's something interesting about that language. What's that like? Nothing to hold on to? Um. It's uncertain. Come on, more. Uncertain. Uh, it's... Um, there's a real sense of urgency. Um, there's a sense of urgency that I have to s stop it. Have to get out of that open. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It was really open. Yeah. So open. Yeah. And what made it even more... Right. You have to focus. You have to... There's an urgency. Uh, uh, right? Red heavens. Where does that come from? Well, uh, uh, it it kind of it's it smells it smells like my dad. <laughs> uh, yeah. Now to go further, we'd be into midwifery. So let's do that some other time. But that's where we're going. Mm -hmm. You got the state of mind, and you'll have to tell me what it was like that you can say that's like my dad when. How old were you? Um, what, maybe um, four... Four or five? Four or five, yeah. 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 Okay, go ahead. Um, I was, I was playing... Yeah, we do it. I was playing in... Um, do, you, do you mind going through it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I, I don't exactly remember, but I was, um, I was, we, we were living, we were living in a kind of, um, kind of a community living situation, and um, there was lots of kids, and I would go out into the yard, into the, I would go out and play with the kids, and I think, I think what happened was I was um, uh, I was sliding down the handrails on the stairs, uh, and my dad caught me. And then um, he took me into the 
he took me into the apartment and he gave me like a kind of a speech lecture how um, how uh, he was basically explaining to me that I'm a very frail kind of creature he was kind of, he was like grabbing my arm and saying you see this this is very easy to um, it's very easy to hurt yourself mm-hmm. like um, the, the uh, he's ex- expressing an urgency yeah what I did was completely um, completely uh, reckless and wrong he told me that what I did was completely reckless and wrong yeah, and what do you think of that um, now, it's. I mean, I was just a kid. I was just a kid playing. I was having a great time. What did he object to you being in? A great state of mind. In a great state yeah. of mind. Come here. I got to teach you a lesson. Don't get in that state of mind. Yeah. It's dangerous. Yeah. You can hurt yourself. He was really wanted to make. He really wanted to make a point how frail I am. Yeah. That was like the main lesson. Yeah. Yeah. You're not seeing right. He had to insist on it. Yeah. 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 What do you think of that? It's bullshit. Yeah. Must have been convincing. Yeah. Um, hey, did he ever, be, did he ever take that much time and give that much attention to you? Only, only when I was sick. Only when I would get injured or sick, uh, he would be like, "See, I told you." <laughs> Actually, I. I dislocated my shoulder at one time playing basketball and um, he really wanted to let me know that I was wrong for thinking that I could do all these things and that, that I was so able. Same thing. Same thing, yeah. Mm. Um, He's saving you from that terrible state. Yeah. Right? You can't be. There's nothing to hold on to. That's right. There's nothing to hold on to. See, you're in that state, and this is a reflection on it. And that means this. And that is reliving this. What's that? Oh, urgency. urgency, I have to focus, I can't stay in that state, there's nothing to hold on to. He's showing concern, it appears. He, he really appeared very, I, I've never, I don't remember him ever being that, um, tender, gentle with me. Mm, That's right. It's a rare, unusual, major event that he's trying to keep you from. He really like, he put, brought me aside, come over here for a second, and like, it was a real like, A lot of these events is you do you do not initiate them. Other people are around doing things, and you are with them. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's true. Also, in the scene when I was four, um, he was telling me how bad those other kids were. He was telling me. Uh, that those those kids are really bad, really crazy. Uh, I I shouldn't. I, I'm not like them. 
he was telling me that I'm not like them and I shouldn't uh, play with them because they will get me into trouble. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> then they may be in a good state of mind too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing could be worse. Yeah. <laughs> Fun, thank you. <laughs> Jump in. Uh, then nothing to hold on to, right? You said you're sliding on a rail? Yeah. No, there was nothing to hold yeah, on to. Right. Yeah, it's very yeah. analogous. It's like hit almost his words, probably, right? Yeah. Oh. Curious. He's trying to convert that into a negative. Right. So, were you beside yourself? Oh, yeah, I was totally beside myself. <laughs> 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 Tomorrow, there's a talk at David. Oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. I'm right this way. She's tired here. I don't know. Was there any bread there? Yeah. Yeah. There were questions. Yeah. 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 I'm just going to say a question. Yeah. Could that have been a self fulfilling problem? Like, um, what a nice Thank you. Another one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm surprised. Like, Dad was pointing out that your fucking rail, at some point, you might have to do it. It wasn't like that. It was like he was really. Letting me in on the secret. Okay. Hey, listen, you thought you were. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks. See you. Be there.